Hey, welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. This is my spoiler chat review um, about the Devil All the Time film, a new Netflix original movie. No, we can't. He's a pig. So if you haven't seen the review or if you haven't seen the film, then uh, do be aware this is going to be filled with spoilers. So one of the reasons why I wanted to do a spoiler, I, I, I need to kind of have a reason to go back and talk, you know, do spoiler. If, if the review is okay and you can get the gist and that's going to be enough for you, that's fine. But sometimes you kind of just need to talk about certain plot points. Um, and uh, for those who have seen the film, I, that's this place. So do chat to me in the comments, uh, join the Discord so we can have a chat there in even more detail if you need. But for now, let's talk about one of the main themes. And one of the main themes that the director took from the book and uh, put in this film is sins of the father. Um, what we do in our generation that affects further generations or what um, our, our, our grandfathers or our father's fathers, you know, those things our family, do, our family does that carries over. And it, it explores this. And I thought it explores this very well. So we have Skarsgård as the father. You see how the war affects one. You see that moment when the, the son so loved the dog, but he so loves his wife. And then the, for the father is so passionate about believing in, you know, having faith that God will bring back his wife, that he's willing, he's seeing like his really old school Christianity. He kills the dog, the, the, the son is, you know, destroyed, he, you know, he can't forgive his father. But Skarsgård has his own ethics system there that he kind of, the way he teaches his sons, the son, his son, the way he teaches his son to speak, to act, you know, there's certain things that he carries with him. So when we get to the Tom Holland character, he's almost line for line referencing what his father has taught him and it made me very aware of like oh they, I wonder if there's things I say to my kids that now they're going to carry on and bring over this is why you got to be so careful with how you speak because your words have power and I think this film shows that um, also your actions have power because they carry on which is why you where you get that saying the sins of the father that moment when he killed the dog I was so upset man because I, I I have grown up with dogs all my life my father was a guide dogs trainer my wife's um, mother you know bred dogs we we love dogs and m one of my best friends in the world is my dog and so when I saw that happen I was very I was very sad that 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 had happened and that obviously that moment stays with him so then we move on into where preachers having power over people, especially during that time, because you couldn't even question what they were saying, um, can get away with so much. And you have this these themes of really nastiness. You have the serial killers, um, the serial killer guy who, you know, he's going to keep, he has a itch he needs to scratch, apparently, that's how they describe it. And once he's scratch that itch and that's the same reference they use for the preacher he needs to keep on doing that and there is a sort of justice because you see this film come full circle with the Tom Holland character he ends up killing the preacher who hurt his sister so who ended up uh, hanging herself with which was just really rough that whole scene when she figures out that she doesn't want to do it and I'm like no oh can't she get off oh man that was just bad <laughs> I was like please please and then she did it. And there's this consistent, you just know shit is going to hit the fan. And it keeps going wrong. It keeps getting darker. Whose side are you on? You hoping that that preacher dies. It, it makes it like a, a weird, can you take justice into your own, own hand? And yet, you know that guy would keep doing what he's been doing. He's not going to change. He takes justice into his own hands, like a dark version of Spider-Man. And then we see him carry on, wanting to visit home, ends up having to kill these other two serial killers. Essentially, he is the hero that we need. The Dark Knight. And thirst. The journey of the Luger gun. It's like a character in the film. From one gift to another. The Luger kept getting, you know, the father gives it to the uncle. The uncle gives it to the son. The son uses it to kill many people and then is buried and it's almost massive symbolism when he buries that luger and puts it there with his dog saying it's finished now i'm going on to a new life and then there's something good that happens to him and he catches uh, a lift in that fantastic uh, beetle van was i the only one that thought he was totally gonna die that that guy in the beetle was like some serial killer that we've heard of or something 
it was that sort of ending because we'd, it'd been intense the whole time and I thought there's no way he's going to get away with it something else bad is going to happen I thought for sure that um, he was going to die then I, I'm almost still waiting even though the film is finished for him to die which is uh, it gives you an idea of the effect the, the tone that that film carries. There are moments in this film which I really appreciated the groundwork from adaptation novel to film. So when we get the the two orphans, when they've become orphaned from their horrific events, from their families, my gosh, and they end up coming together, you see how that later on plays out to the the crux of the story to the fruition of where it's going to go and I really appreciated the the kind of puzzle piecing that this flows if there is a flow there is a tempo but you've got to get there in the end and I think a lot of people would have been turned off by ah, oh, this is all over the place there's so much going on it's so long when are we going to find out how this all plays together and you do and it, you know you do get a lot of films like that and I really appreciated the puzzle piecing together that it must have taken this some work. The storyboarding for this must have been incredible. I think those are the, all the points. If you want to chat more about this film and the performances, I love the performances. I thought um, Patterson was fantastic. He did overplay it sometimes. Um, I thought he, he really embellished, embellished that kind of preacher character. It was nasty, disgusting. Um, I have no qualms about him playing Batman. His acting is great. I thought Tom Holland, for me, again, even though I was rooting for him, I thought his performance was, was fantastic. I was wondering if he could get away from the sweetness of his Spider-Man character to this kind of hard, hardened, life-hardened character. And he does. He plays it so well. Skarsgård, the presence that that family carries between their acting is phenomenal. Thanks so much for watching this spoiler talk review, but most of all, until next time, remember, live long on Tuesday.